<laughs> Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I have a lot to talk about, a whole sheet of things from topics. We got weather news, smoke, air quality. There might be some rain coming up. I got also uh, some a couple art clips uh, from a lot of the art museums, mostly the Missoula Art Museum. They have a lot of in new installations, so we got some art clips from there. I got Mark Moss on the show. They're doing a special Tell Us Something this Sunday at the Wilma. He'll talk more about that later on the show. I got um, City Council Report, where they're talking about the urban deer population. Um, let's see, what else I got? I got a, a sh uh, summer short series that was made by the Boys and Girls Club and uh, MCAT's very own Neil Wells, and I'll be showing that as well. And if we do have enough time, I will uh, show you uh, some highlights from MissCon 2017. It is already on our Facebook page, so you guys can watch it anytime. Missoula's Community Media Resource. So let's move on. Let's talk about what's happening in terms of weather. So it is currently 49 degrees outside. Today you have a high of 86. You have that low of 57. It felt a little colder than usual today, and I felt a little more moisture in the air. I don't know if it's just me or whatever, There, but there's going to be a 20% chance of thunderstorms with maybe, just maybe, it could be a chance for rain, but you don't know. Um, that's also another thing that brings me into uh, the top story for today, which is the rain. Um, so in the Missoulian, uh just this morning, I looked on their website, Missoulian.com. Rain looks like it may be on the horizon be, uh, because between the mixture of smoke and those clouds, it's pretty hard to tell. But in the Missoulian article, uh, Dan Zemphy, a meteorologist for the National Weather Service in Missoula, said that the weather models have been trending for a wetter, cooler scenario by next weekend. But if you haven't already known Notice outside the little nip that's in the air. Um, that's definitely uh, maybe true. You just don't know for sure because you know you don't know if the rain's happening until it's happening. And with the mixtures of rain, oh, with the mixtures of smoke and the clouds, it's kind of hard to tell whether or not we are having uh, the, the basically the fog is not the smoke. So, anyways, on the flip side, uh, managers of the 21 fires currently burning in Montana are preparing for another active weekend because of the thunderstorms. Uh, the blanket of smoke has se uh, severed. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, okay, so basically the blanket of smoke has uh, has limited the fire growth since Monday. Um, monitors by Steely Lake Elementary School remained at the highest measurable of 1,000 UG M3s Thursday morning. The level uh, started falling shortly afternoon, a few hours earlier that day before, the, and plummeted through the very unhealthy range to unhealthy by 5 p.m. So uh, Steely Lake has been one of those places that have been very bad in terms of air quality. And of course, it does make sense that uh, other parts of the region, including uh, the city of Missoula, have experienced a handful of rainstorms in the past two and a half months. The airport got only one in mid-August. It was 0.2 in, uh, of an inch, and if you don't remember that, it was a Sunday during the um, Missoula County Fair. So that's when the, basically last time it rained, and we basically had some clear skies for a couple of days, and then the smoke just came through. And then we had that really nice time uh, uh, September 1st. It was a very moderate, um, clear uh, weather and stuff like that. But then on Labor Day weekend, even Missoula saw, saw as high as hazardous air quality conditions as well. So currently, let's talk about some of the fires that are here locally and around the area in the state. Lolo Peak Fire is at 49,123 acres, 35 percent contained, and there's 432 people on it right now. Rice Ridge Fire, there's uh, it's at 122,843 acres, it's five percent containment, and is at 818 folks working on it currently. The Mayor's Fire, it's at 59,441 acres, and the estimated containment date is Saturday, October 21st, 2017, approximately 12 p.m. That's what it says from the Incenta web. Um, that's where they have basically all the fires and where I get all this information about how big the fires are. But let's kind of switch gears and let's talk a little bit about some of the things that are happening in the national news. Uh, Hurricane Irma looks to be coming straight for Florida after hitting the Caribbeans. Uh, Josie and Katia uh, are two other hurricanes that are following in suit behind Irma, while uh, Josie, from what I saw, from what they said on CNN, is that it's actually moving further into the Atlantic, but there's also some other, uh, there's another, the other hurricane is moving closer to the uh, South American region, those kind of areas. The National Hurricane Center on Thursday morning issued a hurricane uh, watch for Antigua and Barbada um, exactly 24 hours after uh, I mean, after warnings expired for Irma, such a watch means that hurricane conditions are possible in about 36 hours. Um, as of 8 p.m. last night, Josie was 
out over the open Atlantic, not far from where Irma was several days ago. The Category 3 storm has maximum sustained winds of 120 miles per hour, according to the Hurricane Center. Uh, most of these hurricanes are being watched while people in Florida are getting ready to get hit by Irma, which has downgraded to an extremely dangerous Category 4 storm on Friday, with winds reaching a sustained maximum of 150 miles per hour, the U.S. National Hurricane Center said at its peak, Irma sustained maximum wind speeds of 185 miles per hour winds, making it one of the strongest Atlantic storms on record. Let's go back to Montana and let's uh, show you the map of the air quality currently. I go to svc.mt.gov. This is a great website where you guys can find out the air quality in and around the state of Montana and beyond. Um, but as you can tell, we are in the unhealthy range in these areas. Sealy Lake is, of course, hazardous and has been. Um, if you look at the map, it kind of sustains. It's been looks like it's been going down since last night. It might go a little bit higher by noon. It usually does, and then it will uh, basically fade out. It currently stands at 122.6 particulate matter in the air for the city of Missoula. So that's pretty much it, what's happening with weather and news in and around the city of Missoula. I have an art clip, and when I come back, I'm going to have Mark Moss on the show talking about Tell Us Something on Sunday at the Wilma. and he is here to talk about Tell Us Something that's happening on Sunday. I just saw it over events. I'd be like, Mark, you got to come on yeah. the show and talk about uh, Tell Us Something once again. Um, and this one is called... Up the Blackfoot is Up the, the Blackfoot. theme. We are going to be the closing event for the In Footsteps of Norman McLean Literary Festival. Um, lots of cool events happening this weekend for that. The festival started today, and you can find out information about all the different events um, at their website. McLean in the foot, what is it? It's uh, um, McLeanFootsteps.com. Yep. So tickets and information uh, about all those events that are happening uh, right now. But also this to weekend, find out more information about Tell Us Something, people can go to? Tell us something uh, That's where there's a link to get tickets for the event on Sunday. Uh, we have eight storytellers. They have 10 minutes to tell a true personal story from memory on the theme of the Blackfoot. So oh. we all have Blackfoot River stories. We're going to hear some stories about horses. Here's some stories about fishing and rafting and tubing on the river, um, some rescue, river rescue stories. Uh, really, really interesting yeah. stuff. And even for my own personal um, thing, I've actually never watched or read or had uh, know anything about a uh, river runs through it. Really? I'm like, it's, I mean, like, people are just like, huh? It's like, why not? It's like, I just, I don't know. Well, you know, you'll have a lot of opportunities yeah. to see that this year. Um, Sunday in the afternoon at the Wilma, they're showing a river runs through it. Tom Skerritt will be there what? to do a little bit of Q&A about the film. They're going to show the film in the afternoon, then there will be a little break, and then Tell Us Something starts in the evening. So, yeah, pretty cool. Um, I remember when I saw River Runs Through it the first time in the theater, I went with my folks, and um, I lived in my own little apartment, and in the morning I went over uh, to have coffee with my mom, and she said, you know, Mark, I saw this incredible film last night. And I said, well, what did you see? Because I remember sitting, you know, in the theater next to her, and 
She said, it's called a river runs through it. It really reminded me of you and your brother. And she said, I saw it last night with you. And she was so like sucked into the film that she totally forgot that I was even there. Yeah. And uh, a lot of these stories of Up the Blackfoot are going to be basically everybody's own personal um, experience with the Blackfoot River. Exactly. And the river runs through it. Is that the Blackfoot River? Yeah. The big Blackfoot River is, is where uh, that story is set. Cool. Yep. So, um, and it's nice because they're going to show the movie beforehand because that's one story about how it became a book and became a feature film. But of course, many other people probably have their own stories of being up the Blackfoot. Absolutely. Well. There's so many Blackfoot River stories. Uh, if you live in and around the, the Missoula area, a lot of people have those kinds of stories. And so we're going to celebrate that cool. this yep. week. Have you uh, met any of the speakers? or? Uh, Absolutely. We, you know, so we run a workshop. Tell us something runs a workshop for every single event. And ideally, all of the storytellers come together in one space at the same time. Yep. Um, anybody can do it. Uh, you got to sign up ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Yep, anybody could tell a story. Um, because of the Sealy Lake fire and some of the smoke and some of the, the um, difficulty with that and the challenges with that, uh, not all of the storytellers were able to come together at the same time because some of the storytellers are living up in right. the Sealy area. Um, so I was able to do some one on one workshopping with the folks that couldn't make the main workshop. But I've heard all of the stories, and it's pretty interesting when I'm putting together the roster of who's, who's going in what order. I think about it like what it must be like to put together an album. Yeah. Like if you're, if you're in a band, which songs come first and how that all flows together. <laughs> and so it's a lot of kind of a lot of fun. Yeah. Yep. So cool. Sunday, right. September 10th at the WOMA, up the Blackfoot stories, tell us something. Tickets are available at Rock and Rudy's, the Wilma.com, and Top Hat Lounge box office. Cool. Are there any of the uh, album um, covers, right? Anything for that? Like any um, anyone that kind of really stands out for you? Like something that's really catchy? What do you mean? In like terms the of artwork? Story? Oh, the story? You know, I don't want to reveal the gems. They're all gems. Mm -hmm. um, and each story resonates differently with each audience member. So, cool. yeah. Excellent. So once again, Wilma Theater this Sunday. Doors open at 6 p.m. Show starts at 7 p.m. But if you want to show up a little bit earlier, you can see a river runs through it at the Wilma starting at... I think it starts at 1. I would check it out um, in the... I think it's in the Independent, and you can certainly find it on the in the Footsteps of Norma McLean website. Yep. And at the Independent, at the very back of their page, you see the Norman McLean Festival. So Mark Moss was gracious enough to bring this down here for the interview, just to kind of show this. Um, learn about Norman McLean and more about uh, River Runs Through It and of the Blackfoot, um, especially for Mark Moss's Tell Us Something, which will wrap up the event, uh, wrap up the festival right. this Sunday, 7 p.m. 7 p.m. at the Walmart. All right. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, I really Scott. appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. And if you want more information, you can go to um, tellussomething.org or you can go to um, mcleanfootsteps.com. So we'll be right back right after... A uh, couple new programs will be airing on MCAT. Stay with me. Great year. Um, so that's the hydrology. We've also got a problem in the lower basin with overuse, continuing after the quantification settlement agreement. Um, and this is a very basic water balance for Lake Mead. Um, and it's all based on annual averages. So on average, Lake Mead gets about 9.0 million acre feet flowing into it. That's releases from Lake Powell that are owed by the upper basin to the lower basin.
All right? And yet, what has happened over the last several decades is that we've implemented processes and created strategic endeavors that were based upon science that wasn't aligned to the system. How else can you explain the archaic and antiquated annual performance review? Has anybody experienced this? All right? This is a, think about this concept, right? Billions of dollars every year. Millions of hours, right? Performance management system, annual performance evaluation. Somebody thought at some point it would be a good idea, hey, if I want to make you a better performer, I'll talk to you once a year and you'll get better. If you got kids, how's that working at home? You do that with home with your kids? No way! So you can read uh, tourism as a text the way you read society in a text, the way you read a text as a text, a literary text, or the way you read capitalism, capitalism as a text. In order to do that, uh, uh, to avoid solipsism or personal uh, opinions, you have to use uh, tools. And they are, we have tools. In fact, the tools of uh, criticism invented for in the 60s, 70s to try to make sense of a text, even a complex text, okay? And uh, part of that, part of those tools, one tool I, I'm going to use, as you're going to see, is psychoanalysis. Not so much the psychoanalysis of Freud, but the post-psychoanalysis, like there are some uh, famous uh, thinkers and psychoanalysts who have reworked Freud after the, the 1920, uh, after the... Hey guys, welcome back. And that was the last of the uh, lecture conferences that happened at the University of Montana. And now, we're basically going to be getting started up with the Prison Lecture Series, kick off the lecture series year. Uh, there's going to be a lot of lectures coming up here. There's the Global Public Health. We got Wilderness Issues Lecture Series, which basically started MCAT's Media Assistance Grants Program. And if you want more information about that, you can go to our website, MCAT.org. MCAT.org is the place to go if you want your uh, organization, your nonprofit, a civic group represented through a visual media that is MCAT. All you got to go, all you, all you got to, all you, where you got to go is how do I and request event recording and it brings you to a page. And if you don't know, uh, if you're qualified or if you're able to do it, if you go to that link, it describes exactly in full exactly what we would do with that program and how we would work with you as well. So you can get in contact with us, MCAT at MCAT.org. Or you can call us 542-6228. Um, MCAT does weekly orientations for anybody who is interested in being a part of MCAT, being one of our mini producers here at MCAT. You can be here every every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. and we'll basically give you an uh, orientation about what it means to be a part of MCAT and what it means to be part of a um, growing visual community here about, in terms of media and just helping people um, improve their skills in, with camera or have a new skill with camera work. Also, to find out more information about myself, go to uh, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. We're all on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. You can't miss us. It's great. It's wonderful. It's, um, I'm, I'm, I'm vamping. Anyways, uh, let's move on to the next topic, which is pre-critic. Well, it's finally here, again, uh, from the makers of a Five perspective point of view, which follows many narratives to one epic conclusion that has been done in many different ways, comes it. It coming. And it is coming to make you confused unless I explain it. They might as well just call this movie Pennywise the Clown. Um, makes sense. His uh, second the theatrical appearance. And no, it is not the original made-for-TV miniseries. He did make a theatrical uh, appearance in the movie Cat's Eye with Drew Barrymore. Um, he basically, kind of the cat's um, walking around and walks through many different stories of Stephen King, including It. So uh, there's a scene where um, the cat runs next to a storm drain and the clown tries to grab at it. That was the first and only time um, you saw Pennywise in the theaters until now. So they're making a movie. Um, basically, it's the uh, part one of the, the part two miniseries. Uh, it follows a group of kids known as the Losers Club. Um, and from what many critics have already been saying, it's not much of a, uh, a losers movie. And um, from uh, but this is pre-critic, so I'm just going to criticize it a little bit more than I probably should. Even though I am probably going to see it because it looks really good. The hype. 
is real apparently but let's talk about crap um so anyways uh the uh the losers club looks like this movie might be quite the loser itself but maybe it might find the audience of losers all right so up next uh that's 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 it so anyways um nothing says hollywood like you're old we follow an old what's her face from those comedies where she's dealing with stuff and things happen uh reese witherspoon that's right um, who already sounds like she should be Hollywood Golden Girl. Reese Witherspoon sounds like a great name. That's it's a wonderful name for a starlet. Um, she stars in a movie about a woman who's going through the midlife crisis. Her husband leaves her, probably for a younger girl, you know, whatever. Um, and she uh, basically leases out three rooms to three young men um, who basically she starts, um, I guess, getting wooed by. It's kind of like Mamma Mia, but like without music, I, I guess. Moving on. Um, Rememory. Ever, er, ever want to relive an old memory from, in the form of a film? Um, I think I already, did, I think they already did this in a Robin Williams um, film called Final Cut. But watches a man, Peter Dinklage, um, who helps people remember where they left their keys in the form of t of technology and memory. The movie is called Rememory, um, and I remember an episode of Batman Beyond where they kidnap a kid who saw Batman's face and they use technology to see the kid's memory. So, long story short, they ripped off Batman Beyond. And that concludes Pre-Critic. I'm going to make it short and sweet. And here is a movie that was made by a bunch of uh, cool little kids um, from the Boys and Girls Club. It's called Subpar Heroes. <laughs> I just took down the main wall. And I'm 95% done. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guess what? What does this button do? just learned to be heroes. Again? Uh-huh. <laughs> <coughs> Let's end 
this. I agree. Yeah, that, 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 that was, um, um, yeah, that was it. Okay, so, you guys like deer, but you don't, some of you don't like too many deer up in your gardens eating up all your food. So, the public safety and health dive into the urban deer problem that's happening in Missoula. Um, the urban deer population has been an ongoing and contagious, um, continuous uh, issue. Some... Ugh, geez, every time I'm on television. Um, some residents of Missoula believe that there are too many deer. On a number of occasions, constituents have raised, uh, raised issues of safety and property damage due to what is perceived as over deer population. Overpopulation of deer, sorry. Suggestions include some of the form of population control, what is, d what, basically they're going to take what is being done in Helena. Other uh, constituents have stated that they have no problem with the city's urban deer and they want them to be left alone. The fact that the city of Missoula exists is the primary reason deer are present in the num in the in the numbers that they are. The simple truth is that we, as a community, can not both provide an excellent place for deer to live and expect there not to be a, rel a relatively large population of urban deer. If the quality of the habitat does not change for the worse, um, it is unrealistic to expect a substantive change in deer population without direct and continuous intervention, sterilizing or killing them. Um, John Debari reluctantly opens the conversation, and he is pretty much against um, wasting time talking about the deer population. But here he is. I know that there's been a lot of effort put forth in the past in Missoula to investigate this. You yourself, Mr. Wilkins, have put forth a lot of effort on this. And, uh, and so far, I guess we found that there's no real impetus to change the current situation. But um, I thought it's probably worth an, uh, a few minutes for us to sit around and have a conversation, as I said again, about what our experiences have been, uh, what our interpretation of solutions have been in other communities, and just to see if there's anything that we should consider doing in this community other than leaving the status quo. So um, that was really my intention to have a conversation and, and see if it would lead to anything or, or nothing for that matter. Thank you. So, uh, <laughs> so, so basically, um, yeah, I mean, he, he does not care about it. So, <laughs> so, Whatsoever. Okay, John Wilkins, he talks about uh, the split between folks and the referral. Um, some people have brought it up and are concerned about the deer population, and John Wilkins is voicing their concerns. It seems like after I did that subcommittee, I was the guy everybody called <laughs> and still do on the deer. So I have one idea on the cost part, but there's a lot more that have to be done before you can get to that, is to have districts. And I don't know if you can have special districts or not, or how to set them up. But it's an idea, I guess, that could be looked at. And, uh, you know, I don't really have any more suggestions of what you can do that we haven't talked about and tried. But then that was four or five years ago, so maybe there's new things. So I'm willing to listen. So anybody want to say something? Brian. All right. So um, the next quote I have on here is... From Brian Von Losberg, as you just heard from John Wilkins, he talks about how Helena dealt with their urban deer po population, um, and they also are how they are currently managing it. 
seeing the data from Helena, and I completely appreciate the, the preponderance. That's a primarily mule deer or, or almost exclusively mule deer population, and the ours with the whitetail were more mixed, that they're different ball games, and we can't assume that what has worked there necessarily would work here. But if you look at their data, now that they've been running that program for several years, um, you know, they have achieved some um, some reductions in conflict and in, in calls that have come into the police department. And so that's another thing I wanted to get out there is I, I'm hoping that we could query the police department, and I don't know if anybody has done this, to find out what our trend over the past several years has been with calls. Um, in Helena's case, I mean, they're clearly tracking it, and this is deer-related calls, including dead or injured animals, problem deer, and motor vehicle crashes. And they've got good data that shows that when 2003, 130, uh, in 2003, 2004, jumped to 213 and peaked at 363 in 2008, which I believe is when they started the program. And then they had significant reductions down to a low, a five-year low in 2014 of 154 calls. It has since gone back up again, so um, there's some variability there. But having that data would be really helpful, and I, I'm hoping one of us uh, could make a request to the police department to see what, if anything, we're tracking there as a, as a starting point. All right, so the first solution in dealing with any kind of overpopulation is their migratory patterns. It's figuring out exactly where they go and how to deter them from going to certain places, especially in large masses of the population as well. Many things is that uh, once a deer basically finds a feeding ground that basically suits them and basically can feed them for long periods of time, they have a tendency to stick around for the food, um, but don't care about much other things as well. One of the uh, things that Helena did was basically that they used to trap deers with nets. Unfortunately, the deers that were captured would squeal and would cause neighboring homes to complain about the noise. Um, un uh, also, another good point is that the uh, Fish, Wildlife, and Park asks that you should not provide deer with food or a place for them to gather. Uh, let them roam and avoid people rather than being acclimated to people, which can become a problem because sometimes uh, um, th there were some um, reports of deer stomping dogs, but mostly it was because um, it's uh, a mother doe protecting her fawn. Um, and then other things is like sometimes when a male um, whitetail or mule deer are in the area and they're fairly not afraid of humans, they have a tendency to uh, be ag aggressive to some humans as well. So um, Marilyn Marler, um, she talks about some of the solutions that the city of Missoula um, or, or what steps can be made um, to improve, uh, I guess, um, help deal with the overpopulation of deer? If we have an overabundance of deer and we have hungry people in Missoula, it makes perfect sense to put those problems together. Um, but not all of Missoula has even the perception of a deer problem. In Ward 6, where I live in the number streets, there's no deer. It's like kind of a big thing on the block if someone sees a deer in the neighborhood. And I think that for that reason, the, the deer control districts would be the way to go because it is, you know, Grant Creek, Miller Creek, Rattlesnake. And I don't think that everybody should pay equally for a problem that's kind of the, um, it, it's not equal throughout the, the, the town. And I also wanted to say on the record that um, it's Missoula, Montana is a pretty special place and it's a special Montana kind of a problem to have too many white-tailed deer coming into town and um, the, the traffic issues are very serious but um, in my, my line of work I hear a lot of people complain about deer eating their landscaping flowers and we do have some personal responsibility for where we live in the world to adjust our gardening practices and our expectations. You know, we can't just be entitled to grow the same plants that we might have grown in a different part of the country. There's a lot of um, creative solutions to, to landscaping and gardening. Um, all right, so that was Marilyn Marler talking about some of the uh, issues that some of the people have with the deer eating their uh, begonias or whatever. <laughs> uh, I, I have no idea about – I have no green thumb, and I, I don't even try to have a green thumb. So anyways, in many ways, the city is considering doing a survey, but it kind of seems clear that uh, we like deer here in Missoula, and there's also another population that doesn't like deer, but not in the way that uh, – not the, the what, but what would work – 
is to take an educational stance on um, to come up with a Missoula run section that would basically show people how to repel deer in their backyards um, without encroaching or bothering other neighbors. Uh, many wards in Missoula don't have a simple problems, um, uh, don't have these similar problems. A lot of uh, the deer are in rattlesnake areas, university areas, and then also there are some areas up, uh, I think, Ward 4 in um, w John Wilkins District, because, you know, when you're going, especially the deer are very hard to handle, especially you, when you're going up and down those hills, um, up um, the South Hills, there's a lot of like hilly places and turns and whatever, and it's it's hard, especially when the deer just comes popping out of nowhere, and it can c cause car wrecks as well. So that's uh, some of the sl problems that have there. But here is Julie Armstrong, who believes that uh, commu that the community should be more involved in dealing with the urban deer overpopulation. Um, I think we hear from the people that have a deer problem. But I think if we put a survey out, we might hear that people don't think it's an issue. Um, the cost aside, I, I looked at what it cost Helena, I looked at what it cost other um, cities, and the best model I found was actually in Cedar Park, Iowa, where they allow citizens to, it's like getting a B tag, because they have, there are more boots on the ground, people know where the deer are, they allowed them to do it for like an hour a day for two weeks. The police were notified of when it was happening, everybody had to go through additional safety training, sign waivers, um, there was legal training so they knew what would happen if, if a shot went wild. And then there was no cost for processing, there was no liability if you put meat in the food bank that wasn't healthy. So it worked out really well, Cedar Park, Iowa is smaller than we are. Um, so there are ways to do it without cost, but they come with increased risks. Um, we have to, I think we have to do a survey first and find out if people want us to do this. State Farm has us listed as the number two state in the country for deer collisions and um, costs related to, to animal collisions. And so they've got us one in 51. People have reported a collision with a deer. So the cost is significant. So it's gonna cost us to either call them, it's gonna cost us to deal with them. We're spending resources one way or the other, so I think it comes down to whether or not people want us to do it. All right, so that was Julie Armstrong talking about a, a survey about having more information about this overall. In many ways, uh, let's say, okay. So um, one of the solutions is from a public comment about a, a lady, uh, Ingrid Gibson. She gave a, pu a public comment on um, birth control for the ur for the urban deal, which basically would be a long-term solution to uh, overpopulation of the deer. Um, there have been a lot of improvements in, in the last few years. The EPA actually just approved immunocontraception formally uh, for deer in July of this year. It has been used successfully in deer for many years and also in equines, horses. Um, so we uh, have a lot more information. Um, seven states now have implemented programs using immunocontraception. Um, of All right, so that was Ingrid. Um, um, Gibson. She goes on a little bit more details about birth control and how, uh, lo like, how like um, a lot of uh, things. Um, basically, the birth control is a chemical that prevents uh, birth for two years among does um, and can be administered via DART. It usually takes a year for this to work, and that's more of the long-term solution. But from what a lot of the comments going back and forth, this can cost anywhere between 150 to 250 dollars per deer that they inject with this um, contraceptive chemical dart, basically. Um, Marilyn Marler has a suggestion to deal with how people can live with the wild animals. As she said, already said before, it's kind of like we're kind of encroaching on the urban deer since Missoula is a great place and um, we're just kind of like invading their territory. And this is Marilyn Marler. But I have long thought and not had time to work on it that instead of just looking at deer issues or bear issues in Grant Creek and the Rattlesnake Creek, we should probably start looking at them in terms of living with wildlife districts up there and have some comprehensive rules for bo both of them. And um, I know there are guidelines for safe keeping honeybees safe in bear zones. And do you really want to have chickens in a bear zone? And it might be time for us to look at some of those urban fringe areas and you know find out from fish wildlife and parks what the consistent problems are and maybe do some something more proactive in those outlying areas because it is um, like, like a lot of people have said here today and the the woman with the farm party t-shirt you mm -hmm. know said these are we, we have to make decisions about how we live our lives and um, yeah 
And the all right. I, so that was Marilyn Marler um, basically s stating that sometimes, um, um, a lot of times, being more educated on. Um, basically living with some of the wildlife that is in the, in the area a lot of times it's like well we moved basically on their ho in their homes and it's kind of like it's kind of hard especially when we have irrigation and able to grow um, plants and suitable food sources for a lot of the deer that come through here it's kind of like we're kind of doing that to ourselves in a lot of ways there's also another thing um, in terms of like homeowners associations and rules and stuff like that because some people are just like well what if I build like a huge fence just to prevent any deer from coming into my place there's also um, issues with like the homeowners associations in certain rattlesnake areas that say you can't have a certain amount of uh, fence there prevent like basically at all uh, depending upon like the aesthetic of neighborhoods whole nother issue another whole other, no whole other ball game in, in, in itself so it's one of the things that is uh, being discussed talked about constantly especially in the city of Missoula a lot of times people are split on it people who uh, have an urban deer po population uh, urban deer problem um, voice their concern people who just see a deer and they're like ooh a deer are perfectly fine with the deer population and whatnot like that uh, of course i want to know what you guys think and you guys can uh, comment on uh, my wake up missoula facebook page and you can uh, hashtag um urban deer um for at wake up missoula on my twitter feed as well of course that's it for now uh, missoula motion um is going to be on the show next friday to talk uh, i mean they talked about sunday streets in a meeting um during um their uh, public, I think it was public works. Um, yes. Um, and they're going to be, uh, they were talking about their Sunday streets and they'll be on my show on September 15th to talk about Sunday streets as well. So that's kind of uh, wraps up the city council report for you guys. Uh, here is another uh, uh, rolling clip of a PSA that I made that is going to be uh, talking about our Saturday drop-ins, which are starting the first Saturday in October. Hey, how, how, hey, how's it going over? Uh, uh, oh, have a good day. <laughs> oh, huh, I didn't see you over there. What a nice day to be out and about today. But I want to tell you something about what's going on here. Hold on a second. Let me just adjust this. Uh, okay, there you go. Let me talk about MCAT. MCAT is doing Saturday drop-ins starting every Saturday this fall, winter, and spring season from 1 to 5 p.m. Let's go check it out. Come on. MCAT is a great way to create. All you got to do is come on down to our location at 500 North Higgins. It's as easy as that. See you there. Hey guys, let's talk about some of the things that are happening in and around Missoula. As you heard from Mark Moss, I mean, this is kind of like a last minute event that's happening here. And it is the uh, um, McLean, um, Norman McLean Footsteps. Uh, so let me bring up that website one more time. Uh, da, 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 da. It's in the footsteps of Norman McLean, and it's a website called McLeanFootsteps.com. It is a great website to talk about all the events that are happening for the um, McLean, uh, uh, basically the uh, McLean Footstep Festival that's happening. It's the Norman McLean a Literary Festival in the footsteps of Norman McLean. That's what the festival's thing, and it's starting this morning. Already started about 15 minutes ago, and they are talking about um, Friday's program, um, which is going to be at the uh, Missoula's First Presbyterian. Presbyterian. Ah, oh, Jesus. Uh, I guess, <laughs> wow. Sorry. Wow. I just like just like blasphemy and all everything just like within f zero to like 60 in like no time whatsoever but of course reverend mclean's uh historic church um you get to learn all uh sorts of things there's tours uh, are self-driving and include uh geology of the buckfoot valley uh norman's neighborhood guided tour at noon uh, maps and descriptions of many nearby restaurants ser serving lunch will be provided 1 p.m Explore the native and non-native his, uh, history of the Blackfoot Valley with keynote speaker and author Richard Manning, Blackfeet uh, uh, Troubadour Jack Gladstone, authors Deborah Erling and uh, Stephanie Ambrose Tubbs, story of river restoration from the big from the big Blackfoot chapter of Trout Unlimited and Blackfoot Challenge, and the founding of the valley's first dude ranch with Juanita Juanita uh, Vero of the E Bar L Ranch, and the tickets are t Friday all day. Tickets are twenty five dollars for all the events on happening on Friday. They have a gala dinner happening 
at the uh, basically the Blackfoot River Keepers. Um, all sorts of wonderful things happening happening pretty much all day Friday for the festival. But let me um, switch, go back into the other events that are happening um, during this. Uh, Guts or Volunteer orient um, Orientation. Um, this is for uh, a, a strong, independent women who are looking to volunteer and basically teach girls, uh, making a, um, basically making a difference in the lives of young girls. It's like the GUTS is an acronym that stands for Girls Using Their Strengths. Um, it's a leadership workshop and they're looking for smart, strong, dedicated women volunteers to um, with unique community-based leadership empowerment programs designed f by and for young women. And this is for uh, girls aged 9 to 18 gain great experiences as an action group a facilitator in Missoula Elementary, Middle, and High School support girls as they create positive change in their lives, um, their communities, and in the world. If you want to learn, you can find out by going on to uh, YWCA of Missoula. It's basically already started. You can also inquire by um, calling them at the YWCA, or you can go to ywca.org for more information as well. Bubble painting is happening at the um, family's first children's museum from 11 to 11.30 a.m. The whole idea is you make paint bubbles and you basically pop the bubbles over a canvas and it creates wonderful um, painting, um, I guess, art. Um, I'm just trying to find the right words for it. Um, Montana State Hemp and Cannabis Festival is at Lolo Hot Springs. What used to be here in um, the Karis Park has moved to Lolo Hot Springs Resort. It is the goal and mission of the Montana State Hemp and Cannabis Festival is to bring the state and cannabis community together to educate those who may need to learn more about the powerful plant and its hemp and cannabis. The festival strives to support the numerous different organizations that are like-minded and encourages collaborative collaboration and unity. They have 50 vendors food trucks, blah, 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 a lot of people will be there. Uh, Wild Fest, Northern Rockies Heritage Center starting at noon today. Um, save the date for the full weekend of outdoor adventure, live music, hikes, family activities, gear, demos, and it's at Northern Rockies Heritage Center. It's an afternoon of conservation stories and activist training with an evening reception with guest speaker Pete Fromm and live auction. So that's happening starting at noon at Northern Rocky Heritage Center. You can't miss it. The Missoula's Wise 50th birthday party. Um, it's their birthday and you're invited. Join for the celebration of 50 years of a healthier Missoula with food trucks, games, activities, and a free Whiz Pop concert. Join on, s on today. Uh, wait, wait, uh, wait, is it the 8th today? Yes, it is the 8th today. Sorry, like when people put a date in the events as well, it's always like, oh, is it the right date? Yes. So today, at 4 p.m., um, they have all sorts of things happen in the YMCA. Um, entry is free, and or you can say, I'll get a membership next time I come to the YMCA. Um, Missoula Monster Project at Zootown Arts Community Center. Zootown Arts Community Center, Zach and Spark and Any Given Child are teaming up to showcase the third annual Missoula Monster Project. The whole idea is it brings um, kids be able to draw and um, create their own monster, and basically they have... Uh, um, People like uh, adults who uh, basically do makeup and stuff like that to basically transform um, the kid into the monster th of their own creation. So it's a great little thing that's happening at 5.30 p.m. that night as well. Uh, beginning Cowboy Jitterbug Dance is happening at the Di Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center at 6.30 p.m. Um, learn about the greatest dances of all time, according to the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center. Started with the basics um, into turns, spins, and pivots. This dance is easy to learn with a lot of interesting variations and changes. You and your partner will be burning up the dance floor in this class. Smooth sold shoes required. You and your partner need to enroll in this class. So, um, Glow Ride to Glow Fest. So, Glow Fest is happening tonight at the Fort Missoula. Um, Fort, Mizzou at, uh, Fort Missoula. I don't know why I said the Fort Missoula. Uh, Want to go to the, Go uh, the Glow Festival at Fort, but not sure how to get there? Now you can ride with the Missoula Bike Ambassadors. Uh, you get to wear bright uh, colors, neon, um, um, light colors, you know, those uh, glowing sticks or whatever. Um, I'm, I sound really old. Yeah. <laughs> What's the best way to spend your Friday night? The former Missoula Region Park for this epic glow party, which is reached use live music by Ghost Peppers, DIY glowing lawn game competition, light maze, glow themed art showcase, costume contest, fluorescent photo booth, demo escape room, and more. A $5 suggestion donation supports the community programs at the fort. Questions and more at 721 park or visit at the fort.org. And ra raised in the saddle, University of Montana at 7.30 p.m. told in under 55 minutes the comedy rules across the Big Sky State via steam locomotive following teenage cowgirl Alice 
Greeno as she encounters a who's who list of famous Montanans. Alice will need the iron will she's known for because this train ride will provide everything, everything bit as exciting and challenges as sticking to a 1,200 pound of bucking, snorting, kicking muscle that's waiting to get greet her at her first rodeo competition. Raised in the Saddle. It is a basically comedy, um, one-woman show, it seems like, um, or it's a performance, so you can check that out. It's going to be University of Montana. University of Montana has a lot of great things. I believe the outdoor cinema is happening in Missoula tonight as well, but also it could be an issue in terms of the smoke that are happening because it is a uh, fairly high particulate matter. But let's talk about some of the... Um, things that are happening tonight. Um, let's see, program, sorry, I had to go to their website, which is nmcdc.org. It's the North Missoula Community Development Center. Um, let's see, program, events, I want to say events. Nope, that's not it. But I, okay, so I was told that they have an outdoor cinema that's happening and um, Outdoor cinema basically is uh, this weekend and I think next weekend, and they basically go to, oh God, I can't even think of this school, but um, outdoor cinema, it happens um, basically, where is it? Okay, here's the lineup. So basically this, um, this Friday, A River Runs Through It will be playing at 8.01 p.m. It's two hours and three minutes long. And to kick off the movie, um, my own documentary will be playing um, at the place. So you have a chance to get there. It's going to be at 1001 Wardens Avenue is the location. It is at the old school. I can't remember the school for the life of me. It's just like completely blank my mind. But 1001 Warden Avenue, uh, you, it's on the north side. It's at the old school. And what they do is project it up there as well. And it's going to be showing a river and through it which is being preceded um, by my documentary, The Traffic Signal Boxes. You want to know how they, uh, the process of being an artist and drawing, um, basically painting on those uh, traffic signal boxes in and around the uh, city of Missoula? Well, the documentary was made in, uh, uh, with the help of the Public Art Committee, who's, uh, who uh, tasked MCAT with doing it and I'm the one that helps shoot and edit it so it's going to be a great documentary I've heard a lot of great things about it I'm, I'm not going to do my own horn but if you get a chance to go see the the, um, the movie tonight a river runs through it this will be uh, preceding it so check it out it's going to be great um, so that basically kind of concludes what's happening for your Friday there's a lot happening on Friday um, but you know like if you do uh, want to try to be outdoors you should be outdoors for the outdoor cinema um, so that's that. Um, let's talk about some Saturday stuff. Saturday markets are happening from 8 to 1 p.m. Uh, if you are interested in hockey or you want to learn some hockey, Glacier Ice Rink is the place to be Saturday morning. Um, children age 4 to 17 can try out the game of hockey for fun, safe environment. The clinic runs from 8.45 to 9.45, and all equipment is provided for free. Register online at GlacierIceRink.com. Um, YWCA Pathways training begins at 9 a.m. It is seeking volunteers to join the team of advocates to provide crisis intervention and emotional support for survivors of domestic and sexual violence. So their pathway program is off, um, offers crisis counseling, safe shelter, weekly support groups, and children's services, as well as legal, personal, and medical advocacy. After applying, volunteer advocates must attend an intensive 35-hour training in preparation to prepare to take shifts at the shelter. Advocates for survivors of violence and or answer the 24-hour crisis line. Appl applications deadline is September 6th. Um, oh, wait, it already it already went by, but this is when they do in the Pathways training begins. I'm assuming if you're really interested in being helping um, people who are uh, survivors of domestic and sexual violence um, and want to help those people out, you guys can call YWCA or you can YWCA.org to find out more information. String Art 3D Crafts with Odette Grassi. Living Art of Montana is a great resource for anybody um, 18 or older um, dealing with illness or loss. No experience necessary. For questions, you can call them at 549-5329. They use art as a healing tool for people who are dealing with an illness. Um, Saturday, apple picking at Moon Randolph Homestead from 11 to about 2 p.m. in the afternoon. You get to pick apples for the Moon Randolph Homestead, and they make some cider, and it's going to be great, and this is over 125 years in the making. They plant a bunch of trees 
back in those days of apples and it's that's what they do so missoula community powwow is happening in the missoula fairgrounds there's so much happening this weekend honoring the missoula community power the public is welcome to attend contact um giselle forest at g forest at tamarackpm.com for more information powwow dancers singers and native games and youth activities it all starts noon on saturday missoula valley relay for Hi for life is happening at 4 p.m at lds church the uh, American Cancer Society Missoula Valley Relay for Life helps raise funds for cancer research and programs that help cancer patients and their families. Um, dirt track cart races is at the Big Sky Cartway at 7 p.m. tomorrow night. Big Sky Cartway is the premier outlaw cart track located just 10, mi 10 minutes from beautiful Missoula, Montana. Big Sky Cartway is the seventh mile oval dirt track featuring outlaw carts. Racers range from the age of five to 60. Experience top-notch racing from May through September, a true family event that you can enjoy. Um, you join and cheer on your racer or bring your own cart to race. The thrill of the dirt track racing is not far away. All right, so there's a lot of events happening in and around. I just want to give another shout out to Mark Moss for uh, basically um, being on my show, talking about the uh, basically the um, the last event that's going to be happening for the uh, the Norman McLean Festival in the footsteps of Norman McLean Festival, and it's going to be talking about reverence through it. It's going to be showing at the Wilma at around in the afternoon, and also they're going to um, end with a nice tell us something about everybody's own personal reverence through it story. Up the Blackfoot is the theme. So I want to thank you guys for joining me this morning on Wake Up Missoula. I thank you for joining. Oh. All right, thanks for joining me.